Hey, big fella, wake up. Wake up. Hello. Wake up. You're up. Come on. Chop, chop. We've got blooms to dedicate. Let's go. Well, good morning, cousin it. It is good of you to join us. I so appreciate it. I know you need to get your camera legs back up and running. It's been a while, but here we are. Thank you for showing up. And thank you for coming to join us on the patio at the end of November for another edition of Blooms for You. This is my maxillaria variabilis, lovingly called Cousin It. Greetings from a not so sunny Spain. I appreciate having you here. It has been quite a busy month. The orchid shuffle is in full swing and we're just getting our winter legs on, so to speak, finding a different rhythm. I want to dedicate Cousin It's Blooms as he progresses and becomes more and more showy with more and more yellow blooms to everyone that is not mentioned in this episode today. I would like to make a massive shout out to the Orchid Ninjas for your support here on Ninja Orchids. Thank you to all of you for being here, for supporting the channel, for supporting the orchids at such an early stage. Your orchid, Phalaenopsis Corner Survey Variety Chatella Day, still has the two blooms that we had previously. She's holding on to them nicely. So I'm just going to use a recycled picture because she is already indoors. And guess what? If I were to move her, I would probably pop one bloom off <laughs> because that is just how I do. These things happen and it's too risky. But anyway, all Orchid Ninjas, thank you so much. If you want to become an Orchid Ninja, well, check underneath the subscribe. There is a join button. Click on that, see what perks you have. And please consider yourself super welcome to join in the Orchid Ninja gaggle. Everybody's support is so appreciated. Watching the videos, if you haven't subscribed, that would be amazing. Please do so. If you like what you see, not just when it comes to the blooms, but the fact that I do go and check a list out of every name that appears on my channel, be it as a subscriber or in the comments, everywhere I have a new name, it goes on a list. If you like that kind of a concept, make sure that I know that you're here that I can add your name to the list and eventually there will be a bloom specifically for you. However, in this episode, we have other names, other blooms that have opened up and not to leave anybody out. That is why Cousin It comes in clutch after Dendrobium Hibiki is looking a little bit tired because all of his blooms go to everybody that watches the video and that supports the channel just by being here and subscribing and liking the video, sharing it out if you should so choose. Know that you're all welcome. But I think that's enough jibber jabber for now. This is about the orchids, about the blooms and about you. So let's go and check out the blooms for you and who has actually been mentioned this time around. My Dendrobium Victoria Regina, three blooms. I say thank you to Morena Merten, Monica Crema, and CK Warhola for your support on my channel. Thank you so very, very much. Of the three different styles of blooms I have on this mount, because it would appear that I have three different kinds of Victoria Regina on this mount, seeing as I did buy two and mounted them together, turns out I've got three. This is my favorite bloom. It is the most saturated. And today it would appear that the color on the screen is true. Now, when I take photography, for some reason, those pictures come out a little bit different, but there are no filters on any of my photos unless I say so. Sometimes I have shadows in the back that I pull away and then we have an image that may be a little bit more overexposed. But in this case and in the photography, I was not using any filters. The bloom is as it is gorgeous and true in the viewfinder and whatever you would see on the images. This Victoria Regina has been doing pretty well this season, seeing as the summer wasn't that hot. However, we had to fight some kind of a pest because for the first time I had spider mites. So there's a combination of two things maybe happening that affected some of the growth points either the spider mites or some of the thrips got to her as well. We dealt with that very, very quickly, but we lost some leaves in the process. And there's some concertina leaves at the end where the problem was manifesting itself before I could deal with it. And some weird spotting, but you know, dendrobiums just hate anything kind of insecticide, pesticide. 
They just object to any kinds of treatment. So I just conclude that the spotting on one of the leaves that we still see is a combination of two things that I was using garlic alcohol on one treatment and switching to insecticidal soap the next treatment and possibly the two combined um yeah being a dendrobium <laughs> it'll tell you very quickly it didn't appreciate that but thankfully it was noticed quickly and dealt with so the orchid is fine all the growing points are now growing normally again and she's busy at the base as well I've got lots of new growths coming new growths from last season of course not being a fast grower but they're developing beautifully as well and thankfully were not affected at all by any of the pests on top of that two more new growths are forming and i do believe one of them will be on the cane of the victoria regina that i like the most and that is my deep saturated one that you see in this dedication to morena merton Monica Crema and CK Warhola. But we're not done yet. The same cane with this cluster of blooms is going to bloom another time. We have another bud coming that I can discern, maybe two buds, and there is another cane lower that is also going to bloom. Now, from the base, it would appear that is also the dark, saturated, blooming cane. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. This orchid at this time is very, very busy and I am loving it. It's her prime time temperature wise. The days aren't as hot and the nights aren't too cold, even though she can go down to five degrees Celsius, which I have had in the past. But I'm enjoying the progress very, very much. I also took some moss off the base because I didn't like how aggressively the moss was growing up the canes and I exposed some roots because I was a little bit concerned as well about the quality and the status of the mount. How is it handling and coping with that moss on it? But it would appear that the mount is still doing great. One day I'm gonna have to deal with this orchid, but for that I'm gonna have to find a beautiful baked piece of cork bark. Now is not the time. Now is the time to once more say thank you to Morena Merton, Monica Crema and CK Warhola for your support on my channel, for your comments and your constant warm welcome when I see you elsewhere around the tubes. <laughs> CK Warhola, I'm talking to you. Thank you so very, very much for being so welcoming. Thank you for being so supportive. My non-fragrant Dendrobium Victoria Regina, she blooms for you. Guess who this is? This is Fusarium Discovery of 2022. This is Brassolelio Cattleya Golden Cellar. And this bloom goes to Lynn Bristol, who lives in Orchid Paradise. So Lynn, I know that you probably have the perfect conditions of everybody that would want to grow orchids al fresco. It just so happens that as Golden Cellar opened up, your name came up and this is the bloom for you from me to say thank you to you for your support on my channel and know that you are appreciated. Thank you for everything, for the encouraging comments and all the updates that you provide regarding your collection. Uh, yes, my bloom is a little bit wonky, but can you forgive her, please? <laughs> she still smells nice. She's got a beautiful lemon floral fragrance, not very intense on the lemon front, but there's sort of an essence of lemon mixed in with the floral fragrance that you can sort of expect from any cattleya. She's been open now about four days. I've been sort of watching this bloom with a little bit of a side eye, as you can imagine, seeing as we discovered Fusarium in the rhizome earlier in the season. But it would appear that the orchid is doing okay. Not good, not great, but she grew some fabulous roots into the pot, which is amazing. However, now you can see how desiccated those pseudobulbs are. Even the latest pseudobulb is desiccating already. So I didn't want to miss the opportunity, A, to update on the fact that Golden Cellar did bloom, and B, 
to dedicate to you, Lynn Bristol, this gorgeous bloom. But I will be taking the bloom off prematurely because the orchid needs to rest and gain her strength. Those pseudobulbs getting that shriveled that quickly, based on what time of year we are heading into, I had something similar like that happen to me where I thought we were heading into spring and I promptly lost the orchid not to Fusarium, but for the reasons of stress and letting her bloom. So, Lynn Bristol, a beautiful pale yellow. The colors are true on the viewfinder. She's a little bit richer in the photography, but that pink flare on both petals and sepals, that is becoming a little bit more dominant as the orchid ages and matures. This bloom, I am extremely pleased to dedicate to you because this orchid could have been in the bin a couple of months ago, very, very easily. So Lynn Bristol, a very special bloom from me to you with a major, major thank you for your support on my channel. This is Rhincodendrum cabalgata in verde, or is it? I'll get to that, but first of all, the most important thing I want to do is to say thank you to Simple Cooking and Savas Simitsis for your support on my channel, my beautiful, supposedly Rhincodendrum cabalgata in verde, two blooms, they bloom for you as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. Know that I appreciate it, know that I see you, and a thank you is in order. Now, let me explain myself here and why I say, or is it? You see, the parents here are Rhincolalia digbiana and Coilostylus or Epidendrum ciliare. I have both parents. Rhincolalia digbiana grows bolt upright. Coilostylus ciliaris grows somewhat upright, but has a little bit more of an elongated rhizome. Rhincolalia digbiana has greenish, pale yellowy blooms, reflected here in the petals and sepals. They're more on the creamy side because they've taken on more of the characteristics of the Coilostylus ciliaris parent. So both of the parents are species making this a primary hybrid. However, when you look at Rhincodendrum cavalgata and verde images on the interwebs, this is not what you see. Yes, you see the fabulous detail, the shredded lip. But what you see on the interwebs is a very big open bloom with even deeper green petals and sepals. There is no hint of pink. And the bloom, as I mentioned, is open. So this floppy business going on here, this is not the bloom wilting. This is the characteristic of the orchid as it blooms in my collection. Another thing that makes me doubt a little bit whether I really should call this the cabalgata in verde is the fact that the back of my sepals are pink. Now, I love it. The first year, I'll be honest, I was not too keen because I thought, are you going to open up or what's going on here? First time bloomer for me back in those days. And I thought, well, the second blooming, we'll get our groove on. It's never manifested itself because every subsequent year that this orchid has bloomed for me, I've got the claw and the closed shape and the pink blush on the sepals. However, we have a lot of varieties when it comes to the orchid hobby and the parents are confirmed. So being that the parents are what they are, this is a Rhincodendrum cavalgata and verde, even though it looks nothing like the other ones on the interwebs. I got myself something most unusual, <laughs> but I love the blooms and I am so grateful that she's a reliable bloomer for me year in, year out. And give these blooms once again to Simple Cooking and Savas Simitsis. But there's more to this orchid than just these gorgeous blooms. Of course, for about 11 months, we just grow and enjoy foliage or <clears throat> in my case, guard the foliage so that nothing happens to it, as in sunburn or pests. This orchid happens to have two leads, and the second lead has not bloomed for me ever. The second lead also grows very, very early in the season, and then, you know, it just matures and produces roots. And then the lead that you see blooming now, that is the one that has always bloomed for me. And being a tease that it is in the viewfinder, you can see the second lead is right here. This is the first lead blooming. And because of light training, I want it to grow back into the pot. You can see even the sheaths are still not ready to come off, whether the sheaths here are pretty dry. 
So it would be very nice to one day have both leads blooming and then a staggered blooming because they don't grow at the same time. We'll have to wait and see if that happens. There's also some much needed maintenance due on this orchid. Ta-da! That is correct. 2023, we have work to do. But let me tell you a little bit about the fragrance because both parents are nocturnally fragrant and yet this one for me has the freshness of the lemon of the Digbiana as well as its parent, the Coilostylus ciliaris, during the day. It is very faint, but it is there. And I believe that it is pretty faint during the day because at night it does get a little bit stronger. However, in my blooming alley, she makes a statement and I know that she's in bloom. So considering I'm saying faint, imagine how intense the fragrance is at night. It is absolutely delicious with both parents being highly fragrant. This orchid, of course, is going to be super fragrant as well. My only surprise is during the day, not just at night. And I love the way this orchid also teases you with its sheath within a sheath within a sheath growth. Look at that. Outer sheath, next sheath. Next layer, next layer. And then we have a sheath that produces the buds. Ugh, you can't imagine when you see that for the first time and you're going, what are you doing? Sheath and sheath and sheath. <laughs> that is her little quirk, but I do thoroughly enjoy it. And yes, even though she looks a little bit droopy, I find that now with the pink contrast, there's some kind of character in her and I have come to accept and love her. So thank you very, very much, Simple Cooking and Savas Simitsis. For your support on my channel, you've got Rincodendrum Cabalgata in Verde blooming for you here in southern Spain. Massive thank you to both of you. It is a shame that we have to be so far away from my Tolumnia pink brish, but I do prefer to have the whole orchid in the viewfinder. I just hope that things stay in focus because, you know, Tolumnia blooms, especially with very long spikes this time around, they have a tendency of bouncing around in the breeze, as you can see, and ahem, it may be that the camera won't find the focus, so I'll try to be mindful of that and try to do my best to just keep the picture in place. But you see, I'm rambling. I'm already getting ahead of myself. First of all, all three spikes of my Tolumnia pink brisht bloom for Richard Chaput, Dorothy Hopkins, Solo Winds Aurora Borealis, Francis Colinares, Jasmine Lights, and Maria Zukova. I hope you're into Tolumnias because your names came up as she was opening her buds. And this is one of the most vigorous Tolumnias that I have, apart from the pomegranate that is also super vigorous. Having had to do a major scale treatment, vigilante kind of stunt all throughout the summer of 2022. And it is possible that I'm gonna lose two more. So that's why I'm so glad that Pink Brisht is doing so well. I've never had her had such long spikes. She is absolutely amazing. And the blooms are a little bit larger than other Tolumnias in my collection as well. Clearly she's not fragrant, but oh my goodness, this pop of pink this time of year up against the hedge, it's just beautiful. So once again, a very big thank you as a sign of my appreciation. My Tolumnia Pink Brisht blooms for Richard Chaput, Dorothy Hopkins, Solar Wind Aurora Borealis, Francis Colinares, Jasmine Lights, and Maria Sukova. Thank you so much for your support on my channel. Nalini Cotoli. Altea Benjamin and Andyland. I've got Brasso Catlia, Vinosa, Warbash, Bally in Bloom. Three blooms on a single lead. My second lead this year didn't bloom out, but at least it grew. And well, <laughs> with every new growth, we get roots. So that is important. This orchid has been through the ringer. She was divided two years ago and anything with Brasso in it, yeah, it's always a bit risky for me and my climate. I've lost a few Brasso hybrids in my past and I didn't want to lose this one because, I mean, just look at these blooms. I hope you're into green and if you're not into green, I hope you are into blooms that have a statement in form of a lip like this. 
And I hope you're into spotting because let me tell you something, those are the three points that I do love. Actually, there's four. The star shape of the bloom as well. But I love spotting, I love green blooms, I love a statement lip, and then the symmetry and the dimensions and proportions of a beautiful star-shaped bloom. And that is all thanks to the Brasso in her. Gorgeous bloom. The green makes me want to bite into a Granny Smith apple. <laughs> and I wish that this orchid would resemble some kind of fragrance of a Granny Smith apple because, oh, is that appetizing and it would be a perfect match. But no, she has a citrus fragrance. Maybe there's a hint of floral to her as well, but she mainly has that very faint fragrance of citrus lemon rind that comes from the Brassavola parent. Just Gorgeous, and also she's not only done with all her nonsense and spotting on that lip, and the sepals and the petals in the back are also spotted. So even though when you look at the orchid as a whole, you would think, well, that's green, thin leaves, green, thin petals and sepals, it's all green on green. And what you're actually seeing, what your attention is being drawn to is the lip. Ah, on closer inspection, this bloom has a lot going for it. And yes, she is a happy sap producer when she produces the buds. So any of the white spotting you see around the back, that is nothing to do with a pest, scale or mealybugs. That is all and only exclusively crystallized happy sap. I don't bother wiping it off because if the ants were there, that means there would still be something to glean, but there's not, so it's not going to attract any other pests, but ah. Oh, gorgeousness <laughs> just glad that she's made it we have work to do on her for 2023 i do believe i need to get into that pot and clean up the root ball so yeah mental note to self <laughs> mingi kazi that would mean a lot of work in swahili that is then this is now and now my warbush valley is in bloom for nalini kotoli altea benjamin and andyland to the three of you, thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Loving your comments, loving the exchange, loving the brainstorming and all that fun stuff. And I hope that all the orchids that you have in your collection are doing really well. And I also hope that you are doing well. Thank you so much for being here. And it is possible that I have to speak very, very quickly for this clip <laughs> because of the breeze. Well, this is the most sheltered spot I have here on the east side to present to you my Tolumnia firm Dalmatian. I put it that way because, yes, that is on her label. I'm not entirely sure if she is actually a firm Dalmatian, but my little Tolumnia firm Dalmatian is in recovery, so to speak, and she seems to have recovered pretty well from a scale infestation that I had during the summer of 2022. So I'm very pleased to give you three blooms, Mariana Tolosa, to say thank you to you so much for your support on my channel. We have a little bit of sunshine. It looks like there's more than there really is. It's kind of overcast and the sun is trying. So she looks a little bit more brighter. She has a more scarlet look about her as opposed to when I took the pictures while the blooms were in the shade. But she is not a big Tolumnia. She has tiny little blooms in comparison to the others that I have, but she is so, so charming. What I like about the details of these blooms is the fact that the ears look like little giraffe ears. If they were a little bit browny and a little bit bronzy looking, then you can see the shape of the little giraffe ears. They're also a little bit shredded on the exterior. And then with a little bit of sun, they also have a nice little sparkle to them. Totally, totally cute. Of course, she is not fragrant, but my goodness, I was not expecting to see this orchid back in bloom. And she is not going to be in bloom for long, simply because I want to protect the orchid. I want to make sure she gains strength because I doubt that she's fully, fully recovered. Let me just hold her a little bit and help her out. But it is just stunning. I do enjoy so much these darker, richer colors. I have a Tolumnia pomegranate that I thoroughly enjoy. I think they just bring a little bit of a pop of elegance 
Whereas even the yellow telumnias are beautiful, especially when the light hits them. But there is something about the depth and richness of these purples and wine red colors that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy in a telumnia. So, my little Tolumnia Firm Dalmatian, thank you so much, Mariana Tolosa, for your support on my channel. I so appreciate it. And we will be blessed with a second spike eventually. For now, though, these are all yours, Mariana. I hope you're doing well. And wherever you are in the world, that you're coping with your weather conditions, be they nice and toasty and hot, jealous much, or if you've already got snow and cold temps. Then I wish that you stay cozy and have lots of hot chocolate with marshmallows. Thank you, Mariana Tolosa, so much for your support here on my channel. Tulumnia from Dalmatian, she blooms for you. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed the goodies that were on display today and were not disappointed if your name has not come up yet. Know that I can only dedicate a bloom to you if I know that you are here. So if you've never commented on any of my videos, but you are subscribed, please let me know that you are here so that I can add you to the list. And if you haven't subscribed and you decide to subscribe, that would be fabulous. Consider yourself welcome. And please let me know that you've subscribed because, you know, the list, it has to go on. Cousin Nid is back on his perch. I have him propped up against the hedge for any eventualities just in case. And I'm going to have to rotate him so that the blooms will also present themselves at the back. Because right now he's at his finest because of the white facade giving off more light. And what is going on? Yes, sometimes he tells me things. So he's asked me to tell you that he has his own merch. His articles you will see in the merch table down below underneath the video if you are interested. Yes, he also reminded me that he has a clothing line, something that I completely forgot over the summer. My bad. But we're into slippers and water bottles now. So if you want any of his little merch, I can always add that to the merch as well if you were to be interested in some of his funky outfits. Now with that shameless plug out of the way, I'm blushing a little bit. Thank you, cousin. It. I appreciate that you did that. <coughs> Awkward, but yes. Anyway, there is a merch store and cousin it has his own merch. He's very proud of that. <laughs> he says thank you very much for listening to him. And I don't know if he's talking to me or talking to you. Anyway, I am talking to you and I am saying thank you so, so much for watching, for all your support. I hope that you have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye.